everyone, Maya here from My Storybook, and I am so happy that you are back to join me for our next reading adventure in My Storybook's Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month special read aloud event, where every weekday this month, we are sharing a new interactive read aloud featuring a children's book with Asian characters or a children's book that was created by Asian illustrators or authors. Well, today, my friends, we have a Balinese folk tale. So story from Bali, and Bali is an island in Indonesia. Today, we are reading this Balinese folktale about a gecko. Do you know what kind of animal a gecko is? A gecko is like a lizard. If you can see on the cover here, here's a gecko, except it's more slimy and wet. So this is what a gecko looks like. And we are going to be reading about this folktale from Bali. Now, Indonesia is made up of a bunch of different islands. Bali is one of those islands. And on those islands, they have a lot of traditional stories that they would pass down through storytelling. Storytelling is when you tell a story by word of mouth. You tell the story, you say it. So this is a story that was passed on by word of mouth, and now it's been written down. All right, give a thumbs up if you're ready to get started. Okay, let's begin. The title of today's interactive read aloud is Gecko's Complaint. A Balinese Folktale, written by, retold by Anna Martin Bowler and illustrated by Auguste Mare Sukunada. So, my friends, retold means that Anna Martin Bowler didn't write the story, it means that this author didn't write the story. She didn't come up with the story herself. She heard the story from somewhere else, probably through storytelling, and is rewriting it, telling it again to put it into this story. So she didn't come up with the story, but she is going to tell the story again so that we can learn about it in this book. Now, as we read, you're going to notice that this book actually has two different sets of texts, two different sets of words, because this book is written in both English and Indonesian. It has English and Indonesian text. I'm going to read the English words, and if you can read Indonesian text, then you could always pause and try to read along with the Indonesian text as well. Otherwise, you can sit back and listen to the English version of this Balinese folktale. Now, this book was published by Tuttle Publishing, so big thank you to them for letting us read this story together and share this folktale together. Okay, let's take a look at the cover here. What do you notice? right? I see they are in a jungle. It looks like I see a tall tree. I see the gecko over here. I also see some other animals though. What other animals do you see? <coughs> a lot of insects. I see some bugs, butterflies, these flying bugs over here, butterfly down here. Seems like they live in a jungle tropical area. Gecko's complaint. Sounds like he's going to be complaining about something. What do you think a gecko might complain about? Well, maybe. Let's find out. So here's our title page. It has the title of our book, Gecko's Complaint, a Balinese folktale, and our author and illustrator and our publisher, Tuttle Publishing. Okay, so here you can see, my friends, the words. The top words are in English, and these bottom words are in Indonesian. An enormous gecko, a huge gecko, once lived on the island we now call Bali, and a jungle dense with flowers and vines. Gecko's jungle had so many insects, he hardly had to move to find his supper. So it sounds like geckos eat bugs. When a mosquito buzzed by his banyan tree, he just flipped out his long sticky tongue and caught his dinner. Reminds me of what kind of animal also uses a long sticky tongue to catch bugs. Like a frog, right? So here he is, and can you find him in this picture here? there in the tree, like on the cover. And look at his beautiful home, my friends. What do you notice in this jungle? Birds, right? Lots of plants, bugs, so many bugs that he just has to stick out his tongue out and eat a mosquito. Gecko could do things that other animals only wished they could do. He could run up trees and across branches, hanging on by the tiny hooks on the end of his toes. If he lost his tail, he would just throw a new one, stronger than the last. Gecko loved to prowl about at night. His loud clicking sound, gecko, gecko, woke the jungle animals from their sound sleep. They considered him a careless, self-centered fellow. 
So is Gecko a very nice Karen creature? Doesn't sound like it. Self-centered means you only care about yourself. And look over here. Here's Gecko. It's nighttime and seems like he likes to make a lot of noise at nighttime. And why might that be annoying to the other creatures? Right? They're trying to sleep. Oh, this animal doesn't look too happy. However, Gecko had complaints of his own. His jungle neighbors often interrupted his sleep. Sometimes a woodpecker drummed on his tree all through the night. Oh, what sound does a woodpecker make? All right, pecking on the wood. Other times, just as Gecko was dozing off, fireflies would gather in great numbers. And why might fireflies bother you if you're trying to sleep? So much light, right? They would fly around him, lighting up the evening sky, their red and yellow spots glowing like sparks. Of fire. So Gecko has some things he wants to complain about too. One evening, the fireflies gathered around Gecko's banyan tree. It began with one single small flicker. The rest of the fireflies flashed in response, sending waves of light up and down the jungle. Their sparks were so bright they seemed to change night into day. Wow. The fireflies flashed on hour after hour until Gecko could take it no more. Gecko, 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 he called, wearily trudging up the hill to consult Rodan, the jungle's chief. What kind of animal do you think Rodan, the jungle chief, is? Oh, were you right, my friends? What kind of animal is the jungle chief? A lion king of the jungle. This had better be important, said Chief Rodan, dragging himself out of bed. It's the middle of the night. Oh, it is important, Chief Gecko replied hastily. I can't sleep. The fireflies keep flashing their lights. The lion smiled. Well, we seem to have the same problem. The fireflies disturb you, and you disturb me. Yes, said Gecko, feeling ashamed. I wouldn't complain, sir, but I just can't sleep. I'll look into it, Rodden promised. What do you think the lion might do? you think he's going to help Gecko? Let's see. Early the next morning, the lion paid a visit to the fireflies, asking, Why do you bother others? Night is to be peaceful, quiet time in our jungle. The fireflies answered meekly, got a little embarrassed. We meant no harm by our flashing. Woodpecker was drumming all night, sending signals of alarm. We were just passing his message on. Oh, so they didn't mean to be bothersome. What were they trying to do? They were just trying to pass a warning signal because Woodpecker was drilling the wood, which they thought, uh-oh, means danger. They were trying to be helpful. So who is Lion going to go talk to next? Woodpecker, right? Rodden had no trouble finding Woodpecker. Her loud hammering echoed far and wide. Please explain your endless tapping, demanded the lion. Woodpecker explained quickly. Black beetle leaves manure all over the jungle path. She must be stopped before we all get sick from this filthy dung. I've been tapping to warn the others. Mm. This is a very serious matter, Rodin agreed. I will find Beetle immediately. So it seems like they're all connected to someone else, right? Gecko complained about the fireflies, then the fireflies talked about Woodpecker, and then Woodpecker's talking about Beetle. Let's see what Beetle has to say. Black Beetle, plump and gleaming like polished copper, was busy rolling her filthy loads when Chief Rodden arrived. Beetle stopped working and humbly explained. Water Buffalo strolls down the path often, sir, and drops his patties of manure as he walks. I'm only doing my duty by cleaning the pathway. Oh, so it's not Beetle's manure and droppings. It's Water Buffalo's droppings that are getting in the way. So now it's going from Beetle to Water Buffalo. Rodden, worn out by all the complaining, set out for home. Before leaving, he instructed Black Beetle, send Water Buffalo to me the moment you see him, because they each have someone else to complain about, right? Storms gathered as the lion lumbered up the mountain. The blowing wind made his climb difficult. When he reached Mount Batur's highest peak, Chief Rodden roared loudly, Rain, why are you ruining the jungle pathways and causing so many problems for the animals? Oh, now lions complaining about rain. I look closely at those rain clouds. Says, Do you see Rain's face? Oh, I kind of see a face here, Rain's face. While waiting for Rain's reply, Chief Rodden dropped to the ground in exhaustion. 
Looking out over Bali, he saw sparkling rivers, blue skies filled with drifting clouds, and endless hills of green. Raindrops fell, cooling his tired body, and wind blew his worries far, far away. Rajan then understood he was asking a very foolish question. Resting there, he thought of all who benefit from rain. Oh, so he's realizing, wait, rain is actually very, very helpful to the island. Why would rain be good for the island? Right? There's a lot who benefit from rain. The colorful birds, the strong animals, and even the lowly mosquitoes. Rodin smiled and joined life around him as he walked toward home. Rain helps everything grow. It gives animals water, right? When he arrived home, Chief Rodin summoned Gecko and the other complaining animals. The chief spoke sternly. Think of the gifts rain gives to us. The rivers, the many plants of the jungle, and the food that we eat. So he's telling them, think about rain who gives us so much. And to me, I remind you, Gecko, that without rain, there would be no mosquitoes. And without mosquitoes, you would be a hungry and unhappy fellow. So he's trying to show them everything is connected. Rain brings us mosquitoes and Gecko, you need mosquitoes. What happens if Gecko has no mosquitoes? He would starve, right? In a powerful voice, Chief Rajan commanded, quit your complaining, go home and live in peace with one another. And what do you think the animals think about that? <coughs> They're like, oh, okay, we'll go live in peace. And that, my friends, is just what the animals of Bali did. Today, Woodpecker is careful not to hammer on Gecko's tree. The fireflies still light up the evening sky, but not close to Gecko. And Gecko, who grows fatter each day, finds little to complain about. The end. Oh, my, my friend. So it seems like the animals learned a lesson in this book. What do you think they learned? That you shouldn't complain so much, right? That you should be grateful for what you have. Complaining doesn't make you feel good. It doesn't make the other person feel good. Instead, you should find what's good and enjoy and be grateful for that. The end. All right, so that was the Balinese folktale of Gecko's complaint. How one little complaint set up a whole chain reaction of complaints. And it took Lion, Chief Rodden, and the rain to figure out and realize that, wait, we have so much to be grateful and thankful for. We should focus on that and decide and choose to be happy. What was something you liked about this story, my friends? Yes, I like that too. I loved all the different beautiful plants and jungle scenes we got to see, all the animals. And I like how Chief Rodden, he complained himself about rain, but then he realized that he should focus on the good things about the island, right? You can choose to be happy and choose to appreciate and focus on what's good in your life instead of finding the things to complain about. I'm also glad that all the animals seem to live peacefully in the end. So, my friends, it's always fun to read stories from other countries to learn a little bit about what the country is like there and just to learn about some of their own traditional stories that they share with each other and the lessons that they learn from these stories because this was a good one. Don't complain. Appreciate what you have. A fun activity to do go along with this would be to maybe create a craft of all the things that you're grateful for and that you enjoy. Maybe some things in nature since this book had a lot of nature. If you do record your own things you're grateful for, my friends, I'd love to hear what they are. If you'd ever love to share with me, you can reach me on Instagram, on the blog, through email, here on YouTube. All the social media links can be found down below. Also, if you enjoyed today's reading adventure, please be sure to subscribe to my Storybook YouTube channel by clicking on that subscribe button and giving this video a thumbs up. That way we can share plenty of reading adventures together. Otherwise, my friends, that brings us to the end of today's interactive read aloud. I hope you join me for our next Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month read aloud event. But until next time, happy reading.